Going live. You're live. Hey. Look at that. You uh, sure? Yeah, that's what it says. Okay. I don't know how any of this works. Are you Hi, <laughs> it's me, Dutch Bob. Can some welcome to the live chat? Can anyone hear us? There were eight people waiting. Um. Let's see. Well, it says it's 20 sec 22 seconds in. Looks like the volume's down. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. How's that? How's that? Oh, yes. Yes. Hello there. Oh, oh, look at that. Everybody's coming in. Oh, good. Yay. Yeah, do you want me to, to turn this on? Well, I don't care. We can't see the chat from where we're sitting, so we're just going to take your word for it. Well, let me make our cocktails first, and then... No, we have to make the casual first. Oh, okay. Let's introduce ourselves. I'm Dr. Bob. And I'm Dr. Husband. And we're here in quarantine, making America a better place, because just because you can't have company doesn't mean you can't have company food. Right? I mean, uh, That's nice. So today's recipes are coming to us from this yellow box which was gifted to me many years ago by a friend. And apparently it belonged to a military wife who had all these recipes for her fancy military dinners. It's true. So tonight we'll be making party chicken. You I really can't start these now? No, because I'm oh, telling you, because okay. the thing has to cook for 20 minutes and so they don't want to sit here watching it cook if we run out of material. Cherry cream salad. And then I'm going to show you how to make my quick Caesar salad that I make practically every night of the week. Party chicken. First of all, you're going to want to have your staff assemble all of your materials in front of you so that you don't have to do any work at the last minute. Also, your staff's probably bored because they can't have any company over, right? Or a cocktail. I, I, would, have, I would have made them before if I'd known this. Uh, I've got four chicken breasts, which I've already cooked and cut up. They smell delicious. He made them earlier today. They don't smell so great now, but no. they have been refrigerated. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. Uh, you can read the recipe off to me. Oh, okay. It's what? Okay. Six or eight chicken breasts cooked and diced. Two I cups of four because they were big. Two cups of chopped celery. Mm. This celery, by the way, I bought store brand celery. Uh huh. It's filthy. It looks like they just pulled it out of the ground and put it right in the package. Well, uh, with this COVID-19 disease, I guess we, they don't we, want anybody touching it. We wash everything we bring home very thoroughly. Three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. Ooh. Also, I apologize because I don't have Hellman's or Duke's. I have store brand mayonnaise. Oh, a friend of mine today was talking about um, Cinco de Mayo, and she referred to it as Cinco de Mayo. And she didn't mean to. She just said Cinco de Mayo. Yes, and I, she did. No, she didn't. She wasn't being funny. She just like, she just said it, thinking nothing of it. And I burst out laughing. And she didn't understand why I was laughing. And she said, I said, "Well, you've got the Cinco part right. That is that is Spanish, but but Mayo is 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 not Spanish." So well, three now, quarters of a cup of mayonnaise. That, now you're alarmed, everyone, because that's a lot of mayonnaise. But how else is it going to taste good? I'm helping. May I put this away? No, because I need it later. Oh, I wonder if Murph's watching. Murphy, you watching? Watch. Mmm, mayonnaise. Murph is our boyfriend-in-law. He doesn't like mayonnaise at all. At all. Or anything that's called a salad that's not really a salad, which is coming up later. Next. Oh, I'm so sorry. I failed you. <sighs> Three quarters of a cup of almonds. Also store brand. Cosmo's not going to make itself. Just hold the phone. If you've eaten with us before, you know we love to make cosmopolitan. But what's that? Are you getting emails? Yes, probably. Oh. Next. Two teaspoons of grated onion. I'm not going to grate an onion. Guess what? I'm just going to use onion flakes. Good for you. Because grating an onion makes it uh, just like a gooey. Awful. Yes. How many teaspoons? Two? Done. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. Just using lemon juice out of a bottle. Thank you. You're welcome. Two, you said? Two. One half teaspoon of salt. 
I had well, there's the salt right in front of me. How much? One half teaspoon. Ooh, one cup of grated sharp cheese. That must be sharp cheddar. Sharp, yes. Mm. Is there any other kind of cheese that's sharp? No. Besides cheddar? Let's see. Sharp cheese. What up? Oh, Eric's here. Hi, Eric. And Kelly's here. Oh, Kelly. And Terry. Oh, my God. Terry Widdham's here. That's so cool. I haven't seen Terry in a long time. And one Sean. Cup, you said? Yes, yes. Is it eight ounces one cup? Um, yes, yes. I just want to give a shout out. To Sean, oh, we got some, our friends from South Carolina and Florida, and you, John White's here. John and Kay, oh my gosh, and Mary Sue, look at family online, and Crow, uh, Miracle Whip is better. He has no idea what he's talking Crow about. Cats. Yes, right. I can't scroll down, but at least I, uh, there were some people there. Um, next, um, so that was one cup of grated sharp cheese. Yeah, one cup. Oh my. God, really? One cup of crushed pineapple, but, but, oh, Pringles potato chips. I thought it said pineapple. I mean, that wouldn't be terrible. Pineapple and chicken. One cup of crushed Pringles potato chips. I didn't know they still made Pringles. Oh, know? yeah. Yeah. Once you pop the lid off, you cannot. And now it says bake at 425 for 20 minutes. Yeah. I guess that's it, huh? That's it. You just mix it up? Yeah. Do you want some um, help? Do you want to use a spoon? Instead of that, I mean, that's, yeah. Hey. Well, I'll get that, I'll get that. What? I was gonna lick it. I mean, it had cheese and celery and cooked chicken and mayonnaise on it. Of course I'm gonna lick it. You're disgusting. No, I'm Hey, not. you know what I hope? What? That the dogs bark and walk around the floor like they've been doing all day and shaking the camera. Oh, the dogs. Oh, there's some comments coming up. Shall I come over here and read the comments? Yes, you can scroll down on the mouse pad there. Let's see. Um, oh, oh, I can, can't I? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so and Mary Sue and Eric and Dan. Dan. Is this your Dan family member, Dan? Me, probably. It says Dan. Um, and Martha Lopez. Martha. Oh, my goodness. From Stetson. Wow. Eric Crow, Sean Stedman, Eric Crow, Sean. John White, Mary Sue. John White, you're actually on our 65 inch television in the living room, says Yikes. John White. Oh Sorry. my gosh, look how old we look. Um, yes. Oh, Sarah, Pringles. <laughs> I think Sarah 426 has got it. Sarah A, that's your, definitely your yeah. sister. Pringles are the best. Um, <laughs> John White, life size. Uh, Allie and Chelsea are, oh, it's so good to see you. I mean, I mean, to be seen. You know you what I mean. Can't see them. No, of course. Has Ellen DeGeneres signed on yet? No, she's not. Oh, look, you spilled some. How's it? Oh, my God. That's going to be great when it's done. I didn't um, spray that pan. I guess it's okay since it's a gallon of man, isn't it? You want to push it down? Yes. All right. That's going to bake for 20 minutes at 425. Don't panic because we have other stuff to do while that's baking. Well, there's a lot of oil on it, so it shouldn't stick. If it does, the staff will turn it up. Well, yes, you've got Saturday. All right. Mm. Ready? How long? 20 minutes. Have kitchen timer. I use that timer all the time. All right. Can you make your cocktail now? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, Cosmopolitan. We don't like ours too sweet, but so... Uh, take your lime, right? Yeah, and put some lime juice around the rim of your martini glasses. Yeah, yeah, there. one lime wedge, a two, a lime wedges, a two, or two drinks. I'm very particular about lime in my cocktails, aren't I? You won't have a drink without a good lime in it. I mean, I won't drink wine with it. Um, kitchen towel. Thank you. Right. Um, so, Smirnoff vodka. It's the best. It's like mother's milk to me. We usually drink. Literally. We usually drink bottom shelf vodka in our family. I don't know how we have um, a bottle of Smirnoff. So, that was three shots for two. And then one more touch, a little touch, a touch off for Gene Robinson. 
That's your mother. God, may she rest in peace. Oh, and then um, we don't like this too sweet. Normally you would do like three shots of uh, vodka, one shot of triple sec. We just do a half shot of triple sec. It's super sweet. And, oh, sorry, just save your email. I'm going to just save my email. Don't panic, everyone. And uh, cranberry juice. Right? Yeah. Now we, the shake, 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 no. You have to shake and then rest. Oh, yes, you have to let it shake, rest. Shake, rest three times. Do, 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 do. How was your day? I didn't see you all day. I know. I was in Zoom meetings when I was home. Same. Yeah. Yeah. How's the outside world? Um, I. It's weird because I'm wearing masks like everybody else. I think I'm wearing masks. So it's, you just sort of see things a little bit differently. Um, you know, you're not supposed to wear it over your eyes. <laughs> so we went to, uh, or I went, not we, I went to um, church this morning and recorded Mass. Uh, everybody's standing a very far distance apart, so that'll appear on Sunday. And then I came home and worked, and then I went back out. No, then I stayed home and worked, and then I had to go out to a sign company um, because our homeowners association were having a new sign made. So I went out and we worked with a designer on the signs. He's on the board of the HOA. I'm the treasurer, which means I get to do the most work. Um, oh, also, we're speaking in church on Sunday. I forgot to tell you that. We're speaking in church on Sunday? Yes, at my church. What are we saying? We're talking about cooking. Oh, okay. Well, and how it's a balm to your soul. Well, Lately, it's been baked goods that have been a bomb to my soul. Bomb to my soul. And Doritos. Um, we are not. We are no longer buying Doritos, are we? Nope. At the store. We get these big, they had them two for four dollars at the uh, grocery store on sale. And we kept purchasing them. And not, we would, No, not we. I kept purchasing them. And we would go through a bag almost a day. Uh, just the, during the initial, you know, initial um shock of having to stay home and such and, and all that sort of and it was stress eating and then after i think after three weeks i said well you actually said it and i agreed i said we both said we can't have these in the house anymore because you don't feel good right yeah and we're eating so many okay so cosmo yes yep well you won't need any baked goods after lunch. this dessert i'm about to make what are you making Bob? cherry cream salad cherry cream salad yep Nice. It's got cherries and cream. Mm. Um, you're going to start with one can of cherry pie filling. I actually bought strawberry because they didn't have cherry in the store, but then I found that we had a can of cherry at home already. Oh, yeah. So, I bought them to make our, our mug, mug cakes when I thought that was a thing we would do. We'll still do it. Uh, all of this, you understand, is based on the premise that you have most of this already in your cupboard. You don't have to go out and Oh, didn't we have the nicest argument with your sister, your younger sister, about what, what um, um, cupboard staples are? Yes, because I made something Cheers. with evaporated milk. She didn't have Cheers. evaporated milk in the cupboard. That's something people have, right? Oh, my God. It's so good. We haven't had a cosmopolitan in so long. So one can of cherry pie filling. Where's the recipe? Read that off. Um, oh, well, this... Hold the water. Sorry, come here. Oh. Cherry cream salad. What does that say? Gibbons? Gwen, from the kitchen of Gwen. Oh, from the kitchen of Gwen. Okay. Thanks, One Gwen. can of cherry pie filling. Oh my god, this is fantastic. One can of evil brand milk. Got it. Now you can. You can make anything with these. Well, you can you can um, use a spoon in that a little bit. Get more than that. Well, don't panic. Oh, you got it. I told you, my staff laid everything out. You have a perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to double check and make sure that you got everything out of this can of um, cherry pie. Uh -huh. Oh my god! You're gonna get it all out of there. I bet they don't do this in a Ina Garden show. I was 
I have been put it past her. Um, one 15 ounce can of crushed pineapple drained. I already drained it. Good for you. One cup of chopped pecans. Did you say pecans up north? I would say pecan. I would say pecan too, but I am from Unless south. it's pie, you say pecan pie. Pecan pie. Pecan pie. I don't know. I'm from the south, but my parent, my father was Canadian and and I grew up in a beach town, so. Um, I have a story to tell about my cousin's father, Uncle Jack. Oh, your cousins are actually watching this I right know. now. Um, they'll remember that our grandmother, Mrs. White, used to make pecan pie. And one time she was in her elder years and Uncle Jack was visiting and he was going to help her make the pie. So well, Uncle Jack wasn't one for going into the kitchen, was he? I don't believe he was known for his cooking. He was a preacher. Now. And a wonderful guy. Yeah. A wonderful man. And his he, wife, Mimi. What he didn't know and what Grandma didn't tell him was that the recipe was divided. You had one side was the recipe for the crust and one side was the recipe for the filling. They just mixed it all together and made a pecan pie that was about as hard as this bowl. <laughs> Well, Mrs. White was losing her mind at that time, wasn't she? Well, she was, I wouldn't put it in quite so bleak terms, but. Okay, Mrs. White was entering into her. Twilight years. Twilight years. Uh, a nine ounce carton of Cool Whip. Got it. Cool Whip. Can you see that with me? Cool Whip. Except this is only eight ounces. Oh, well, I'm going to have to eat an ounce worth of that stuff before you put it yep. in there. Because I'm just going to throw it. Mm. Okay. I don't think I quite had a cup of pecan seed. Uh, so what do you do? Mix it all together? Um, is that the last instruction? Yep. No. One quarter cup of lemon juice. Oh, I totally missed that. And that's what I don't understand about this recipe, because... It seems like that would not be. Maybe it's to cut the sweetness a little bit. Oh, there was. Uh, did you use pecans in this? Uh -huh. I was wondering what was in that cup. Oh no, I didn't. I don't remember what it was. Okay. That seems like a lot of lemon juice, doesn't it? So what is this? Is this going to freeze up? Well, it doesn't say. It doesn't, no, it, it doesn't, doesn't say nothing. anything. It says nothing. Just, I mean, you don't just slop it on their plates like that, do you? I imagine it does have. Oh, it's to. called a cherry cream salad, so it it is not frozen. It's also not a salad. Well, to be clear, you could freeze it, right? You could. You would probably serve this on a lettuce leaf, like a Waldorf salad. Yeah. I mean, this is a dessert. Yeah. Are you going to taste it? Hell yes. I got enough to share. It tastes like Waldorf salad. But there's no marshmallow in it. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think this has to either freeze or at least be chilled. Right. I'll chill it. How much time is left? What, did you say a timer? Yeah. Only 10 minutes. Wow. Is 10 minutes going by? Apparently. Wow. Well, I'll just make the Caesar salad really slowly. Well, you could tell another story. There's no story. I got it out of her cookbook. Oh, we could take a call. We could. So my phone's not here. My phone's here. Um, I've ripped up some romaine lettuce leaves. Oh, what's Becky? Is Becky here? I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, your relatives have answered a little bit about, um, well, my sister's there too. Hi, Cheryl. Mary Sue. 
um, said, yes, he was not known for, her father was not known for his cooking. This is your cousin. Uh, John says, that's my dad. He couldn't boil water, Sarah said. <laughs> it's in quotes. I wonder if that, oh, Gene oh, Robinson. Yes, I said, yes, yes, yes. Gene Robinson would have said that. Yeah, yeah. Um, no lemon juice in Kay's family recipe. Oh. Yeah, I did some Google research, and I didn't find any that had lemon juice. But uh, That she remembers. She's still searching. Well, I trusted this recipe card, which actually the uh, word juice show that. Oh, Bob, um, I don't know who this is. Um, Robert503, R-A-H, Bert503. Um, it's okay, um, uh, but he says... Mr. Google says to refrigerate four hours or overnight. I, no, we're not staying on the air for four hours. <laughs> we're going to run out of stuff to say. Mom used, uh, John White says, um, Mom used to have him, um, oh, sorry, Mom used to leave him Spanish rice recipe, read Hamburger Helper when she had night school. <laughs> oh, so tell them about your Caesar salad. You make this all the time. All right, so this is for oh. two people. Oh, Aaron. Ripped up romaine lettuce leaves, quarter cup olive oil. Oh, wait, I've got a phone call. Well, are you going to take it on the air? She'll never hang up if you answer that phone call. Hello? <laughs> oh, there's going to be a, a feedback loop um, with the sound. Also, no one can hear the other and no one conversation. I know. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna take this call off air. No, you're not leaving oh. the air. <laughs> but he won't let me. He won't let me go. Quit licking the spoon so much, she says. All right, that's me. All right, I love you. Bye. A <laughs> uh, little Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. How do you say that? I say Worcester. Worcester. I think it's wrong, but that's a college in Ohio. But more than that. Um, Aaron says, hang up. I heard that. This is fun. This is like having all of your family here in a little box yelling at you all the time. Salt and pepper. Ellen DeGeneres sign on yet? Mm. Oh, she doesn't have to. The family's here. That's all that matters. But no one in my family has a daily talk. Mom used to... I love that. Um. <laughs> Juice of a half lemon, which I don't know how much that is, so I'm just going to... Couple Add some fake lemon juice. Right. Now, you might know that classic Caesar salad dressing has a raw egg in it. I'm not going to use a raw egg. I'm just so, going to use a little bit of mayonnaise to cream it up. I wonder. If, if you're out of mayonnaise, you could use sour cream. <laughs> we don't know Robert503. <laughs> I love That's that. That's all right, Robert. Oh you're God. welcome anytime. He's so funny. And Manderson's here too. And Gina's here somewhere. Um, Gina from Prague. I don't know. Maybe. I think so. She's watching. So you mix this up? Yes, she's watching from Prague. Wow. We've gone international. <laughs> So, are you all paying attention to what he's doing? Because I know I'm flitting back and forth. Yeah. That's what you're here for. Right? I think that's not enough uh, olive oil in there, but. No, it's good. Toss that out. Yeah. Um, then, the most important part the cheese and the croutons. We don't call them croutons in this house. What do we call them? Crouton. Oh. You might think that I'm an insane person when I go to the grocery and buy a minimum of four bags of croutons at every trip. But who's laughing now? Do you think you can find a crouton in the store nowadays? Nope. Because I have them. We do buy a lot of croutons. Also, uh, this is grated cheese. I prefer to have the shredded Parmesan cheese. But we're living in difficult times. I feel useless. I don't know what I'm doing. Now. No, you're fine. You can get the next drink ready. Next? We haven't even finished this one. Is this for the... No, I don't know what that's for. Just uh... Also, if you care to have anchovies on your salad. We do. Um, I didn't like anchovies for a long time, and then all of a sudden I was okay with them. I've always liked anchovies, and guess what? What? I've had anchovies fried that were fished out of the sea that very hour. No, I wouldn't even know about that. No, but that's a terrible day. Would you like to tell about it? Well, we went to Italy 
uh, what was it four years ago, five years ago, five years ago, five years ago. Um, and we had done all this fundraising. It was great. We did. We led a big school tour to Italy and oh, and we performed uh, in Alba in, uh, in the school performed. It was great. We had a, it was a beautiful time. And we were heading down the coast and we were stopping at Cinque Terre, which is that um, that you've seen it. If you've seen Italy, you've seen it. This this stacked um, towns, uh, beautiful colored pastel colored towns on the Mediterranean Sea, which for months. That's the uh, only I, place I could you never wanted to shut go. up about it. I, I wanted to go there so badly. I didn't care about. It. I didn't really. I mean, I, I was so glad to see to go to Rome, but I was so excited about Cinque Terre. And so we got there. We we had a limited amount of time, um, and one of our, like I'm not even there ten minutes, and one of my students fell over, tripped. He was taking a photograph. And he fell over and tripped. He fell. He jumped. He jumped from one ancient staircase over to another, and missed. I never heard that. But, oh. Um, anyway, he allegedly he gashed his leg open on the front, um, down to the bone, and it was it was it was gross. Um, and me being one of the tour leaders and the one that had the most proficiency with Italian, which was horrible by the way, my was terrible. Um, I had to accompany him on an ambulance ride up the winding hills through Cinque Terre and spend the rest of the rest of the day and the evening in the hospital with him as he was getting his leg treated to and, and, and stitched while everybody went on with their sightseeing. Um, we were rescued by a colleague uh, and uh, friends that, that happened to be there, that happened to have a car, that we happened to coordinate with people and they picked us up and we caught up with the tour, which was nice. But I never did get to see more than 10 minutes of Cinque Terre. I literally got to walk to the ocean, see the Mediterranean Sea, and then I had to spring into action. So there you go. That's the story. Loads of fun. Speaking of springing into action yes. and Italian things, when we were in undergraduate school, we were performing in the opera Don Giovanni. You might have heard of it. Well, the director decided that for a scene involving uh, characters carrying torches at night, at night that he'd just stage. take a can of sterno and nail it to a stick sticking out the bottom and then light the sterno and that would be the torch. So it was like a stick and then he screwed in a um, a tin can yeah, and then put the sterno fluid inside that, the, the canister inside it and lit it so that the cans would have live flame in them. Now this was a historic wooden All theater. wooden theater. Right. H historic meaning run down. Yeah. Um, it's more, more dramatic. Just say that he nailed the sterno into the stick. That's more dramatic. Okay. Well, Anyway, anyway it's, it's important to know that, that the sterno can was lit and loose inside of a tin can on a stick. And our friends, the, well, the young gentleman of the chorus, not me. Well, he was playing Leporello, and I was playing Don Giovanni. They were sword fighting backstage with the lit sterno torches. As one does when they're 18 or 19 years old. And if you know anything about sterno, you know that it's liquid when it's burning, so it slops out over the top of the tin can. Uh-huh. So the stage caught fire. So back, we're the backstage, backstage during a live performance, and these guys are goofing off. It's the opening night, because they because I don't know if it was opening night, but it was backstage during a live performance. They're sword fighting. One of the cans flops out, hits the ground floor, and immediately bursts into flames. And then they start stepping on it to put it out, oh, but it's sterno yeah, fluid, and, and, it, and it's like spreading on their feet and catching their legs on fire. I mean, it all happened so quickly. So this one, playing the title character, takes his cape off. This is, oh, time's up. I guess we'll never we'll, hear the end of the we'll story. We'll the story some other time. <laughs> this is, in my memory, this is one movement. It's not, but it's okay. Just it's more dramatic. Takes his cape off, beats out the flames with his cape, puts his cape back on the other side, and strolls out on stage. I did walk right on stage and sing from doing that, and and it would they would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those rotten kids. Well, if it weren't for the fact that your costume was made of mylar or something, no, no, it was it was it was a it was a very nice costume, and and the the cape. Uh, the alcohol fluid or whatever it is, the sternal fluid, bleached the cape. It was a black cape, and it was so it was like scarlet bleached things all over it. And my my director came to me and said, "What happened to this cape?" And I said, and I looked at him. And I said, 
We weren't going to tell you about this, but you need to know that I prevented a fire backstage last night. <laughs> so, that's true. Um, would you go attend to the fire alarm? Mm. Yes. What do you call those? Fire, fire, uh, uh, fire alarms. The fire alarm, our fire alarm, the household fire alarm is located immediately adjacent to the kitchen. Well, where all the hot, hot, the hot, smoky smells come from. That's why you don't hear dogs because Butler's been so scarred by the fire alarm going off. Whenever we cook, he leaves. He won't stay inside the house when we're cooking. Well, look at this. It looks like a party, doesn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. Look at it bubbling. Oh, you know your mother would love that. Sure she would. That reminds me of something she used to make with eggs. and It's got a pound of sodium what in it. Of course she, she'd like it. What did she make? Scalloped with? chicken she used to make. with oh. had celery and bread and chicken God, juice. It's just bubbling and beautiful. Oh, let's carry it closely and carefully. Okay. To Don't drop it on my I computer. Won't. I wonder if they'll be able to hear it sizzling. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. Oh, it smells so good. Are you ready? I'm going to try it. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Because I don't have any other material to... Uh... Wait, this reminds me. It smells like and looks like um, that wonderful artichoke dip your mom used to make. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, with the with the tons of mayonnaise and stuff like that, and we and, and we just scoop it up. What if we made artichoke dip with chicken in it? Made it like a casserole. Oh, and you just add artichokes to this, and you're good to go, right? Oh, sorry. Is that drop back in after it touched my mouth? Mm. Good thing we can't have company for real. I know. Let's see what people are saying. Say that's good. Oh, hey, it's Julie. What about Greek yogurt? In the Caesar salad dressing? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. I usually use sour cream. I just didn't have any, so I use mayonnaise. Don DeVries, 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 V-R-I-E-S. Mm. He says, we love cheese. Who doesn't? Crutons have taken that place of Doritos. <laughs> mm. That's true. Um, Sarah, I wish I had stock in yeast. No kidding. We cannot find yeast for love or money no, anywhere heard. at the grocery store. What you have to do is go to like restaurant supplies because no restaurants are open. Okay. And you have to buy like a pound of yeast. Okay. But then you can split it up. Because I want to make bread. And I cannot. I haven't been able to find yeast since the quarantine started. You know what else we can't find? Toilet toilet paper. Yeah. Oh, also, I mean, we uh, have we have a huge supply of toilet paper, but it, it apparently is maybe not septic safe toilet paper. I mean, I mean, because it says what? It says Tw it has like toilet paper combined with moist wipes. I don't know. Are you supposed to dip it in the toilet before you clean? We should not talk about this. No. I'm sorry. We're I, eating. Sorry, we just went blue. We didn't mean to. Um, well, that's all that, that I had. What? That's it? It's only 7.33. Well, what do you want? I made a whole dinner while you're standing there in your living rooms watching. Um, I missed the beginning. What are you making? M M L Z. So, we made party chicken, which is this rest, this casserole here. Uh-huh. We made Caesar salad with homemade dressing. And we made cherry cream salad. Salad. It's gonna be dessert, which is uh, for days. Look how like much a, is in here. A cherry fluff kind of stuff. Oh, I will put the recipes in the comment section below for future reference. As I understand it, this video stays around for a while. Right, the Bushong Taylors are here too. Good, good, good. Oh my gosh! And let's see. They can't eat any of this because they're keto. I know. There's some. How are you doing with the keto? I can't imagine. I we tried it. Did we for like a one minute? I mean, didn't we do whole thirty? We and... started doing it, and then the global pandemic. Right. So yes, we, we had to have Doritos. Kelly has yeast. They said we have <gasps> yeast if you need it. Oh, really? Like, do you have a lot, Kelly? Like enough to share? Um. Uh, good. I'm glad you're sharing your recipes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to go to curbside pick up for that. Oh, Sarah says I'll check the the restaurant supply for yeast. So, like restaurant supply. Um. That's Good. just what I heard. I also heard that all grocery stores have toilet paper if you get there the minute that they open the door in the morning. Oh, oh interesting. Oh, wait, we're getting more messages. Okay. Joe Bush will say, Rebecca cheats, but uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Well, it is public. Rebecca cheats, um, but I lost three pounds, uh, three inches off my waist. That's a lot. Actually, that's 
three inches off the waist is probably like 20 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, Dr. Tudor promised a duet with him playing the guitar. Oh, I almost forgot. Oh, my God. What also, in the recipe box, where did it go? Oh. It's here. Yes. With this handwritten piece of paper, on one side it says Julia underlined, followed by dial soap and toilet tissue, which we've been talking about. Which apparently people always need. On the other side it says August 19th underlined, followed by $78, September 19th, Friday. But then, handwritten, is two verses of Alfred Lord Tennyson's Sunset and Evening Star poem. Do you suppose she read that in the grocery store or during dinner? Well, I don't know, but it just so happens there's an old Methodist hymn. Are we going to sing it? Set to the words of Sunset and Evening Star. Sure. What part do you want? Well, I mean, like, we can go to the piano, couldn't we? We can, but then we have to move everything. Oh. Are you ready? Could we do it? We could do oh, it. I don't know. Let's do it. Yeah. Wait, wait. Let's. What's plugged in? Right? Yes. Uh, we'll go see if they can see the piano. Hold on. Hold on. Turn it on. They're plugged in. Still. It's still got to be plugged in. I know. I know. Just uh, uh, plug it in somewhere. Right there behind the piano. Oh, no. That's not a thing. No, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Is it going to fall out? I don't know. Go see what they can see. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, yeah, they can see it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, you stand on this side. <laughs> tell about the piano. Oh, wait, tell about the piano, Bob. So the piano, Cousins, is Grandma Beach's... Uh, Ooh, what, whose picture is this? Grandma Beach. This is Grandma Beach. I'm sure she was a lovely person, but she doesn't look very friendly in this picture, does she, Bob? No. Um... This and is her piano, and oh, and piano. this is and this is her quilt way back here, made in the 1880s, which we had restored in the 1990s, I think it was, 2000s. 2000s. Um, the piano was bought for her by her daughter Aunt Sue, with Aunt Sue's first paycheck as a school teacher. She bought this piano used for her mother. So, I don't know how old it is. It's solid iron framework inside, which means it weighs 85 million pounds. Our piano tuner um, comes to this, and it's not tuned to A440, it's tuned to like A430 something, 435, which is very common back then. They would tune their pianos to A420, 435, 430, whatever. He said that, because we, we said this, this piano is, I mean, it takes four people to move this piano, and even then they're straining. And he said, yeah, that was before they really understood how to engineer good pianos, so they just, whatever, whatever challenges they had, they just threw more iron at it. Yeah. So okay, ready? Sure. So this. Do you want to say the text first? Sure. Sunset and evening star are one clear call for me. And one. I'm sorry. Let me start again. It's handwritten. Well, you can read it off of here. Oh. Okay. Sunset and evening star and one clear call for me, and may there be no moaning. Of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a tide as moving seems asleep, too full for sound and foam, when that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark. And may there be no endless, excuse me, and may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. By Joan Crawford of the Secret Storm. <laughs> All right, are you ready? I guess so. We're sight reading, everybody. So are we seriously melody or on? I guess I can do the bass part, or what? what do you want to do? I don't care. I can do the big bass. What do you want to do? I'll sing melody. Okay. Since I may have already seen it once or twice. Sunset and evening song and one clear call for me. And may there be no morning of the bar when I put out to sea. But such a time as moving seems asleep, too full of 
Uh, we were going to sing Sunshine Day by the Brady Bunch, but we didn't crack it. We didn't have time um, to get it together. And this was a blurry copy, wasn't it? I'll say. Right? Well, we might do it again. I guess we can practice. Yeah. Oh, Chelsea is requesting another vodka tonics performance. That takes time, Chelsea. Oh, my gosh. I guess we have plenty of it. We're not going anywhere. Right? What could we do? Well, I'll have to figure no, it out. It'll be a surprise. My it's choir surprise. has just submitted videos for me that I'm putting all together into an awesome song uh, by um, Kirk Franklin. So Same. My children's choir is too, but it's not by Kirk Franklin. Uh, well, I guess we better eat dinner. I guess so. How's that second drink coming? <laughs> I haven't even finished my first. Um, do you like this? We could do it again. We could do it every night if you want. No, no we, we can't. Night, but once a week is possible. <laughs> MLZ, where are you? Play guys? Linus and Lucy at Christmas. <laughs> That's funny. That's uh, that we're in our, this is our living room. Oh, this is our living room. Oh, um, we're in Martinsburg, West Virginia, if you didn't know that. Oh. I don't know. Um, I don't know. This is our lovely drawing room. Wait, wait, show them our lovely yes. drawing room. Yes. Oh, wait, I guess I could take this off here. You I can. Know. Yeah. You could probably even unplug it. I suppose I could. Yes, this is our living room. And, oh, wait, sorry, I'm unplugging the. Ah! Here we go. So, living room. Oh, let me show you this beautiful quilt. Since we're just talking about. This is from, um, it's a very, it's called a crazy quilt. And here is the, uh, just right here. We had this made when we had it restored. It says, Almanary Foster Veach, 1857 to 1943, Middle Point, Ohio, circa 1880s. And it's just this beautiful, they used to make these crazy quilts out of, um, out of remnant fabric, like like fancy dresses and things like that. So this is lots of velvets and stuff like that. And as much as we possibly could, we had this restored with, with period fabrics, the best that we possibly could. It was in terrible shape before. Your mother used to crawl up, like wrap up in that when she was a child, didn't she? Yes. Yes. On the farm. On the farm. Yeah. Do we have anything else to share? No. Okay. I think we've I think we've peaked. Yes. I mean, it's hard to do for us, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's so good to see so many of our friends. I'll put the recipes down below. If you have any requests for recipes, old family recipes you want to send us so we can He'll make. make anything and I'll eat anything once. Share butter. Oh, butler. Oh, butler. Oh, butler. He's drinking water right now. That's He's tanking up. He drinks about three or four times a day. And when he does, he takes in as much as he can possibly Did handle. Too? Where is she? She's in that chair. Oh my gosh, she's been sitting there so quietly the whole time. This is the newest addition to our family. Eugenia. Eugenia Victoria, Victoria Juniper Bug. Eugenia Victoria Juniper Bug. We call her June Bug. This is, look, you're going to get a really good picture of her. Oh my goodness, she's so cute. She's only 20 pounds. She's adorable. She's just she a little bit. She should be 20 pounds. Yeah, she's probably like 23. <laughs> but she's precious. All right. All right. Um, well, you it's can so always, good to see family. I love and friends. I love you guys. You can always go to drbob.com and check all of our archives. And until we make a new recipe, probably okay. next week. Uh, Who knows? Or maybe you could do this. We could watch you. Yeah, yeah. Or we could zoom and guest star, and everybody could click at once. Oh, that'd be cool. I don't know how that works, but uh, I'm open to ideas. All, all right. right, love everybody. Bye. Bye. How do you end it though? I don't know. Oh, end.